Welcome to the Retail Insider video series. I'm your host, Craig Patterson, and we're joined here today with a special guest, Matt Crowell. He's the founder and CEO of Get in the Loop. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Craig. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, for those who are unfamiliar, tell us quickly what Get in the Loop is. Yeah, um, so Get in the Loop, it's a shop local platform. So for a business, uh, they use us to deploy a promotions or their loyalty strategy. So it's all about attracting and retaining customers. And then we have our own app, the, the Get in the Loop app. So it's the largest shop local app in Canada. And so it's a place for consumers to find great local promotions and loyalty rewards from local businesses, national brands, and, and even their shopping center. Excellent. And speaking of shopping centers, we wanted to talk a little bit today about digital integration into shopping centers, a little bit around AI, uh, general conversation around that. Let's break into it. Um, what are you seeing in shopping centers in terms of sort of digital integration and new technologies? We can keep that as a bit of a broader question. Yeah, I mean, I think you've seen quite a bit of a transformation over the last three years. I think the pandemic really set it on where a shopping center had to start to be a digital partner uh, with a lot of their tenants and retailers. And, and that's just continued on. I mean, you see a lot of the big groups making significant investments and even smaller groups really, really making it. It's anywhere from some groups that are launching their own apps and their own e-commerce solutions that include delivery and pickup. And, and even to the point that you see small strip centers now building their own website where it's important, even as a, a strip center with 15 tenants to have a website and some sort of digital presence for your tenants and, and for consumers, right? So it's it's something that's continually evolving, but we're seeing quite a bit of an investment in the space and, and you know, it's, it's neat to see. It's kind of like the conversation around omni-channel with retailers themselves in terms of consumers now can go on a website um, you know, get to know what's there perhaps before they go. Uh, some actual shopping centers even have, I guess, shopping platforms that have been uh, created where you can shop the mall uh, digitally. But um, AI has certainly come into that as well, whether or not it's chatbots or otherwise. Uh, uh, how are we seeing um, AI being integrated, say, into shopping centers and with brands in terms of marketing and otherwise? Yeah, I mean, for the brands, especially right now, you know, you can see AI to me is what it's really doing early on here is it's allowing for personalization to be kind of supercharged. I think every brand wants to make their message and communication to a potential customer as personalized as possible. And I think AI is just it's ramping that up. And so a brand's ability to not only target, but communicate and be relevant to a consumer at a local level and really a personal level, I think is continually evolving. And you're seeing that more and more in terms of how a brand can market to you on cross channels, across social, across email, uh, you know, whether it be alerts to your phone. Um, so that's one way. And then from a shopping center point of view, I think there's going to be multiple ways that it starts to make a, a really big impact for them. I mean, we're working on some stuff where we can help support their digital strategy and it's using AI in a way that really, really what it's about is empowering the tenants, right? Empowering the retailers to participate more digitally with that shopping center. But from a shopping center point of view, it's going to be anywhere from content creation. Uh, they're going to be able to understand information better. So when they're talking to potential tenants, I mean, you can see how it's going to kind of go from top to bottom in, in what a shopping center does over time, but we're kind of early days. And, and I, what I'm seeing is just a personalized marketing approach has been really supercharged. And this is done through machine learning so that it becomes, I guess, smarter and also understands what the consumer might be looking for. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the basic gist of it, right? Each brand, depending on their level of sophistication, is going to be doing it better. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see because naturally when new technology comes out, it's the larger brands and the, the larger groups that usually take advantage of it earlier. But I really do think that AI can democratize that ability, right? It's going to also bring automation, sophistication and personalization to local businesses, local brands at some point too. It's do they have the resources uh, and, and wherewithal to use it in the right way will be the kind of key dif differentiator here. And it's being used for e-commerce as well. I know with things like chat bots on websites, uh, I'll be on there and something will pop up and say, can we help you? And it's not probably going to be a human on the other side. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, one thing that I think we've been seeing that that change happen for a long time. Um, you know, there's a lot of buzz. There's been a bunch of new technology that's coming out that's making a pretty big difference. But a lot of this has been going on. It just continues to get better. I think one of the biggest surprises for me when when this has all become the phenomenon in the last couple of months here, really. I would have never seen it really going at the creative space. I mean, I would have thought, you know, it's like it's taking over a lot of the creative space. You're seeing it design images, write blogs, write custom posts. It's like, you know, that wasn't where I saw AI uh, taking over or making a huge impact, but it, it seems to be early on. It's in the creative space, which was a surprise to me. Well, now they're saying that AI, I mean, it's almost adopting in some cases human type qualities. And there's been some fear that, it could almost become human and smarter than humans. And I mean, you, there's with AI lawyers, it, it's got, it's, it's quite interesting. 
Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest industries I've heard that it's going to really make a difference on is is things that can be print and pressed a little bit. I mean, you know, legal is is obviously based off of a functional set of rules. And so it's, uh, you know, I've heard that there's real disruption happening in the legal space right now. I don't know much about it, but when I'm talking to different associates, that seems to be one of the spots that uh, it's going to make a big difference pretty quickly. I'm curious myself as a former lawyer. I mean, it was pretty hard doing legal research years ago. I mean, there's databases, but anyways, with AI out there, I think that the machine could have a a competitive advantage over a human being that would actually have to uh, be able to read these things. Um, <laughs> let's talk a bit about loyalty as well, uh, including, say, uh, retailers with multi-brand locations. Um, AI is being integrated into this, I think, a little bit as well. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, and I think, I mean, it, it comes down to when you think about a multi-location brand, one of the challenges for them is how do you support all of your different locations and and potentially where they are, uh, the types of customers they serve, the, the point in their life cycle, are they just building up? Have they been in that location for multiple years? And that's one of the things that I think multi-location brands have struggled with for years is how do you support uh, various locations across a country that have different needs? Uh, I mean, it's been one of their challenges on social media. If you look at different brands, they have 58 different social media accounts and some of them are posting often, some of them are never posting. And and how do you, how do you automate that? And so you can see where AI in their loyalty space and just in their digital approach is going to make it a lot simpler for them. I mean, it's going to be able to have a customized approach based on location, based on a customer's interests. And, and really loyalty is trying to serve up the right thing at the right time to a loyal customer. And it's, it's adding value, but really what you're trying to do is incentivize repeat purchases, larger purchases, and the more information you have on a consumer and the better you're able to serve information that's relevant, you know, the more successful a program will be. And so I'm sure we're going to continue to see a lot of this rolling out from you, you. You've been seeing it for years with the big brands like Starbucks, but you're going to see that kind of going down market with smaller brands that will, you know, be getting access to this technology and being able to be more sophisticated in their approach to a consumer and ultimately in their approach to building loyalty. When, when you guys think about it, how, how do you see Retail Insider work and, and, and like working this into your business? I mean, it's I know it's all so new to us, but you guys are very much in the content business. I'm, I'm interested in how you see it. That's a good question. That's a good question because uh, I, I mean, I'm a bit older, so I don't want to say I'm an early adopter of technology, but I've definitely been thinking about chat GPT more specifically, not, not to cheat or to do anything where we're not giving the best editorial uh, quality, hopefully, but, um, and now chat GPT, I think right now is only available for information that's up to some, at some point in 2021, but I was thinking for something with say a historical background or something that we would need that uh, you know, would speak to something that had happened before 2021, even if it's 1670 with, say, the Hudson's Bay Company, uh, ChatGPT could actually save us some time in terms of being able to uh, have that research done, having something that's at least partially written. We would always want to go in and make sure that uh, this, there's edits and that it's factually correct. I've heard that there could be some issues around fact checking need to be done and whatnot with these. It's not perfect yet, but uh, something that that's something that I had looked at as well. Um, and in terms of other things with AI, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I mean, we don't have a chat bot on the website. Would we do it? I have no idea. I don't know if we would need it, to be honest, but maybe we we would. Sometimes I find them a little bit annoying when they pop up. I, sh I know I probably shouldn't, but um, I don't know. And maybe I should ask you as well if you have any ideas for us, because, uh, again, with the publication here, AI is a little bit new to me. Uh, you know, I, I'm a little bit older than some of the employees, well, all of them that we have pretty much, other than one. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's what you said. I, I could see worlds where you guys obviously want to build very large amounts of relevant content that's important to your readers. And so the ability for, you know, the different products to be able to write content that's relevant, I still think you need the, the lens uh, edited by an individual that can make sure it's through the right lens and voice. Um, I know one thing we've chatted about in the past is you guys are always looking to be more localized and relevant to your readership. And, and I think there's going to be ways that you could work that in where you can serve up more relevant information at a localized level. I know you do some of that already today, but those are early wins I could see. And then, you know, one of the things that we are doing at Loop, and I think would be similar to you, you have a newsletter that you send out. And that newsletter is generally like a, a conglomerate of all the great articles that have been posted in the last week or different things with maybe a leading article. Um, but it's something where you could have that all pulled together, pre-written for you, uh, and and even back referencing other other letters that would be relevant. So it, it could be it could be really good at building that. That's that's one of the like things that really made a difference for us pretty early on is we've got a ton of content across the country of local businesses, promotions, and things like that. And our email 
we had a recommender system built in, a very light one that, that is supposed to show the right information at the right time to a consumer. But the reality is that's not simple. But now when implementing some of these new tools, it can quite simply pull together so much better information in real time, write a little bit of a note around that information. So it's making that information easier to digest for our consumers. It's even writing push notifications and things like that. Now we still check it all off because it's pretty early days, but you can do quite a bit of unique stuff with it. I could see how that would work into your business, kind of similar to ours. We're, we're both publishing content in a different way and, and trying to engage consumers, right? Yeah, and get in the loop, I think, had a lot of information. Was it, did, has AI helped to aggregate things or tell me a bit about the usefulness that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, early on, a lot of it was uh, automating a lot of stuff that we had people doing, you know, um, so that's been nice. We've been able to free up some resources by using it. And, and a lot of that was content creation. So we already had, you know, thousands of businesses offers, but there was still somebody in the background deciding what was the push notification, what, what should be in that email, and all of that is getting automated. So it's freeing up resources to go do other things. So there's a little bit of efficiencies in our business, which has come on pretty nice. And then one of the ways we're really seeing it impact us and, and we're excited about is our ability to integrate into social uh, is, is, is really kind of getting supercharged by this. So we've been integrated into the social platforms, but the reality is you still needed somebody to write a, a really neat, you know, caption and maybe attach an image and understand the right hashtags and the right time to send it out. Like there was still a lot of, you know, human work that had to do that had to be done to get something live onto a social platform. And now with, with all of the different technology they're coming up with, there's some really neat ways that you can integrate into the social and, and make it easier. I could see a world where it's going to get a lot easier for multi-location brands, shopping centers and others to get their content live more often in, in a better way and at scale, but uh, you know, that's gonna take some time. Those, those are some of the things we're working on. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys will help support a, a new product launch we're coming up with here in the, the next month or two. So I don't wanna say too much, but we're definitely seeing some big opportunities with it. Uh, so we'll be hopefully sharing more as, uh, as we get it tested and, and make sure it works the right way. I feel, yeah, no, I can't wait to learn more because again, I gotta learn more about AI. I, I do feel like I'm a bit of a late adopter with some stuff, even though, you know, I've got Retail Insider here. It's, it's still one of those things where I remember when you had to, you know, spin a spin a, a panel to, to dial a phone on the wall that a person rented. I mean, so pretty. This is quite baffling, but also really exciting. Um, and and now smaller businesses can get in on on I guess utilizing AI technology generally. It's just a matter, I guess, of where to begin and how it's going to be useful. And I know that some people, you know, may not know the answer to that or or what questions to ask even. Yeah, I mean, that's where I think it's really neat, right? The number one thing that's hurting a small business is their resources, both in money and people. And so, you know, if you're today paying an outsourced social media manager, there's a real world opportunity here where you can have AI write you great social posts every day or week, and you can just approve them. And so one thing people struggle with is creative, you know, the ability to be creative and think about what to post on social. And you can go as far as saying what's relevant for a coffee shop like mine in this city, what sort of topics should be talked about this day a week? Now, can you write me some? And it will. And those are things you paid a social media manager for. And so it could be a savings of money and potentially a better strategy they could deploy on social. Um, so I think it's going to be neat to see which, like how quickly do small business adopt these tools? You know, entrepreneurs are, are usually pretty scrappy. They'll figure that out. But digital adoption has accelerated so much. I mean, small businesses have had to take on a lot. It's first get a website. Now be an e-com. Now do digital advertising, understand social, oh, implement AI. I mean, we'll just see how quickly they can do it. Um, but you can see how it, it can give a really neat competitive advantage to a small business. I mean, that's that's really where our platform was built, was helping local business. And some of the tools we're building out on this is to help a small business better market themselves automatically and make it simpler. Because the reality is small business owners are good at what they like to do, uh, and they're not always great at digital. And so I, I'm hopeful that these tools really help bring some power to the local business community. Well, that is excellent. And in terms of using AI generally for a business, um, would they, I mean, obviously there's getting the loop for the loyalty side and, and you know, the other platforms you've got. Um, say if I wanted to, to start utilizing things, is there a, a general, and this is, I feel like a dumb question I'm asking, but uh, a general place that a person can go, like I logged into the chat GPT platform. I did not start using it yet, but I think I created an account or at least I hopefully I did it right. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a barrier to access or, or how easy is this to 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 utilize or, or to just get started using, I guess, is a better question. That's where I would start. I mean, I think the hard part for most people is probably even visualizing what it's capable of doing and, and understanding the capabilities. Right. And I would start there. ChatGPT, 
get in there, ask it questions. You know, it's like the, the early stages of learning, like uh, start to understand the kinds of information it's capable of, the kinds of outputs it can do. And then as a business, start to think about how that plays into what you're trying to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And because there's going to be a lot of efficiencies in small businesses that this sort of technology is going to be able to help them with as well. I know it's early days, but to me, it's like, it's starting right where you did. It's get in there, ask some questions and get the basic learning and then let your mind take you where you think it could really make a difference, right? That's a, it's, it's a neat time because it's really early in the adoption curve here. I'm going to have to try this myself. I'm curious. I mean, I think a lot of people are curious, probably more after they watch or listen to this here. Uh, but, but because I think we are in some uncharted territory. Do you think that, I mean, and this is a, just a general question. I mean, I wonder how AI could, and this is many people are going to ask this, replace humans. Uh, uh, or, I mean, obviously we've got the efficiencies, but I'm just thinking over time, uh, are we going to need a lawyer? Or are we going to need, uh, you know, obviously a call center could be uh, in, you know, at least efficiently reduced in terms of the number of employees there. But but this could have implications uh, uh, on the general population in terms of uh, future employability. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to. I mean, I'm sure it already is in, in so many cases. I mean, as for our company alone, I can tell you that it has already replaced roles. Uh, and and we, those roles have been redeployed in other areas, but it's automated stuff that, that you could do more of quicker. Um, I think, you know, I, I've read some posts and, and I really like these comments is like, AI is not going to take your job. There's still going to be people that need to learn how to, to work the AI and, and work it best in. It's like, it is going to take jobs, but new jobs will be created on using these tools, right? And, and that'll create new opportunities. I'm always an optimist that there, there will still be some good that comes out of this. But, you know, if you follow some of the major tech leaders, there's a lot of concerns. And our, our CTO, he always says to me, he's like, just remember AI lies. You know, that's what he always says. He goes, remember AI lies. Uh, and so even as we're working this in, it's a slow process to make sure you're doing it in the right way. And, and, uh, and it, it will be interesting to see how it affects the employment market. It's like I said, like I was, I was just shocked. I would have always believed the one space in the world that was safe was creatives. You know, people that could write music, write blogs, build design, and that's where it's going. And I, I was like, oh, that was a big shock for me. I would have never seen that come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for myself, I was thinking, but even if we are, say, writing an article with Retail Insider, um, I, I put an element of analysis into certain things, depending on what I'm doing. But I'm just thinking... Uh, uh, you know, uh, I might write about, say, uh, you know, a, say a standalone retailer opening a store and that brand was in another multi-brand store and then it pulled out and I would talk about the trends around that. And I'm not sure if AI would do the same job as say, a human that has background knowledge on something and can analyze and think, but who knows, maybe AI could, I, I don't know. Wait, you gotta, so you, uh, you gotta send me a text after you go try this. It is going to blow your mind how it will write articles on the most in-depth information. If I was to type into AI, explain what get in the loop is, why a business would pay for it, why consumers love it and write me a blog about it and write me a blog that's relevant today, make that blog shorter. It will be way better than I explain my company today. <laughs> I mean, it might sound a bit robotic and you need a bit of editing, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've done some tests around on this stuff and it's like, it's, it's pretty amazing. So I could see some real relevance in your world for, I, like I said, you guys know your voice and, uh, and, and you know, your audience. And so I think there's still a certain level of human element that needs to be massaging and editing, but I mean, it, it could whip you out of articles in five seconds that will be 95% impressive <laughs> and, and real relevant. You know, it's uh, it's pretty impressive stuff as you get in and test with it. I'll be I'll be interested to see how much you guys implement it. I'm going to have to try this. You just convinced me to, to go in and at least try these things. For those watching or listening, uh, we don't plan on having low quality content. We're not going to be changing things significantly, but I do want to try this out and just see, because it sounds like, you know, the quality could be there. There could be some efficiencies. Perhaps we could uh, be able to produce some more content and perhaps more localized content. Like say, you know, we may be able to break things down and say, this is what's happening in Regina. And this is what's happening in Winnipeg. Uh, Yellowknife, I don't know if much is happening up there, but you know what I mean in terms of doing something localized. Kelowna, where you are, uh, <laughs> Patty. Yeah. Um, uh, doing a little bit more local reporting because you know we've only we only have so many reporters and we really do have to handpick what we're reporting on and we try to do a mix of local and obviously you know really big stories whether or not that's Costco or Canadian Tire or Hudson's Bay but uh, if there's efficiencies that can come from this I think that's absolutely tremendous it's a matter of I think you know we would want to maintain the quality of what we're doing and and certainly at least make sure that we're checking over what's being written because I wouldn't want you know just any old crap going out basically. Totally. Yeah, no, it'll be like, it's baby steps, right? Uh, but the, the number one thing is, you know, over, the, I think we've all learned over time is when new technology comes into play, the, the advantage is at least understanding, understanding it and, and seeing where you can implement it and 
for anybody out there, I, I would encourage them to, to learn as much as they can because it's not going away. It's going to continue to be more and more relevant and not everybody has to be an expert or like it, but knowing about it uh, is going to be helpful. It's like anybody that didn't think digital was important 10 years ago or phones were important 20 years ago. You know what I mean? It's coming. So Matt, thank you so much. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing what's going to be happening with uh, getting a loop. You're saying that there's going to be some announcements coming down the pipeline here. And it's a really interesting conversation about AI uh, integrating that into retail, uh, shopping centers, retail, otherwise, and the future. I'm going to go off and try this myself here and uh, start playing with it a little bit and just see what kind of capabilities that it has. So uh, this is Matt Crowell. He's the founder and CEO of Get In The Loop. Thank you so much, Matt, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Craig. And I'm Craig Patterson. I'm the founder, CEO, and publisher of Retail Insider Media Limited. I'm also the host of this Retail Insider video interview series. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here today, whether or not you're watching this on uh, YouTube or otherwise, or listening to this through our podcast channels that we have as well. Be sure to subscribe with whatever platforms you're listening to this on if you aren't already. Thank you so much again for being with us here today. Take care and bye for now.